Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I am super excited because in this video, I'm finally showing you how I built this entire fireplace right behind me. And I'm giving you all the measurements plus the PDF in case you wanna make your own. I am so, so, so excited to share this with you. So stay tuned and let's jump into it. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited, like I told you in the intro, because in this video, I am finally, finally showing you how I built this whole fireplace behind me. I cannot believe it's taking me this long. You know I've been talking about this fireplace for a minute, but I had so much footage to go through, so much editing, so I finally got it done and it's here and I'm sharing it with you all and I'm so excited. I hope you can make one. The, the measurements are in my description box, so feel free to download it. And if you do, make sure you tag me so I can see it. And on that topic, please follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna link it right on the screen over here for you. So you can head on over to my Instagram, follow me on there. I share daily decor inspo and a little bit more of my daily life as well. And again, thank you so much for being a part of this family. Your support means the world to me and happy fall. This is the best season of all, according to me. And let me know in the comments below what your favorite season is. And without further ado, let's just jump right into this video. Mwah. I stopped by Home Depot where I picked up a 1x8x8 and a 1x8x6 common boards that I laid flat on the ground to make sure they were straight and they had no bowing on them. I also picked up a 1x10x6 common board. I had the boards cut to size, which I've included all in the description box. I also picked up some corner braces and two 2x4 two MDF boards. When I got home, I laid out the boards on my floor to make sure they were straight and very carefully measured where I wanted the sides to be. I measured the top and measured the bottom and then attached the sides to the top using 2 inch wood screws and wood glue. Using half inch wood screws, I attached the corner braces to the inside and the outside of the mantle on the top part for extra support. I then carefully repeated the same process with the base by measuring each of the sides and then attaching the sides of the fireplace to the base by using some wood glue, screws, and the brackets. I have a little bit of a hiccup here because I didn't realize this, but if, you, if I were to put this board right on top, it will sit above the actual mantle because this is flush right here. So, instead, I'm going to try to put it inside like this. And thank God I have some 2x4s that I got from some scrap wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and use those as my holders. But that's where we are so far. To get around the issue that I was having with the MDF boards not really fitting inside the frame, I measured the thickness of the MDF and then I measured the same thickness on the inside of the frame. And using a two by three scrap wood that I had, I cut certain pieces that just fit in the middle of the frame, screw those in place, and then I was able to place the MDF boards after I cut them to size on top of these pieces. Now, if you are doing this, you could avoid this step by just cutting your MDF to the correct size before you even go home. I actually had to cut my MDF boards to fit inside the box because my box is three feet wide and the MDF is four feet. So I had to cut one foot off the boards. What I did was I put an extra piece of wood on one side of, of the MDF and I screw it in place. And this served as a guide when I was running my jigsaw alongside of the wood so I wouldn't have a crooked line. Once I was done, I just unscrewed the wood and was able to fit the MDF board onto the frame. I hope this makes sense. After I cut the MDF, I took it outside and using 80 grit sandpaper, I sanded the edges to make sure it was smooth and it fit inside the frame and using one inch screws, I just screwed it in place. Mm -hmm. 
And this is what it looked like once I was done putting it all together. Then I had to create the opening. I wanted a semi-circle, not a semi-circle, but a rounded opening or more of like, like an arch opening, a dome opening. It was more difficult than I thought. I honestly thought it was gonna be easier. However, creating this whole dome part, like the, the semi-circle on the top was so difficult because it required a lot of math. And honestly, I suck at math. If you're good at geometry, you may know exactly what to do, but I have no idea what I was doing. I literally was eyeballing it and created a little makeshift compass using some string and my pencil to create more of a straight circle at the top. And then I pretty much connected the dots and just created straight lines along the sides. Once I was pleased with the shape, I went ahead and cut it. I used my jigsaw to cut through the opening and I'm not going to lie, I was a little scared. I also used a paint can to support the boards from underneath so it wouldn't be shaky, but it turned out really well. To create the mantle border, I used a 2x3 that I actually picked up for free because it was in the scrap wood section at Home Depot, so always check that section for wood. And I used the 3 inch screws and some wood glue to screw it in place around the mantle. To create a box for the opening, I literally used some scrap laminate wood that I had laying around and some extra MDF that I had to cut to size and it was very scary because these were very smaller pieces that I was cutting. So I did it in a way that I could put them at an angle using wood glue and literally holding it in place until they were sturdy and this is what they look like from the back, from above and from the front. I repeated the same steps for the back cover. I put the glue down and held it in place until it was actually sturdy because I really couldn't use any type of nails since these were super, super thin boards. Using 80 grit sandpaper, I sanded the entire opening and then using some pool noodles that I got from Target for 97 cents in the dollar spot during the summer, I glued them in place using hot glue and E6000. Joining the two tubes together was a little more complicated, so I ended up cutting a slit in one of them, pushed it up more inside the box, and then to cover that little section, I just hollowed out a piece of the tube, pretty much cut out the entire inside of it, and then just kept it like a lining, and then just glued it in place. And this is what it looked like once it was all done. I made sure I went over the cracks with some caulk from the Dollar Tree to just make sure I covered those, took it outside and gave it a good sanding. I then brought it inside and primed it using Kills All Purpose Primer. To create a faux stucco finish, I mix flour, salt, and paint. I also added a little bit of water to just thin it out because this space was thick. So I created the space that I put on top of the entire surface of the fireplace. I went section by section. It did take me a couple hours to finish the entire thing, but it looked so good. I made sure I was giving it some texture with my fingers. It just takes a lot of patience. For the base, I ended up using leftover peel and stick towels from my bathroom project. And for the interior of the box, I went in with a Rust-Oleum glossy black spray paint and it completely changed the look of the fireplace.
And here's the reveal in 3, 2, 1. Okay, my friends, thank you so much for watching. I had a beautiful time building this fireplace. It made me feel connected to my grandfather. He was a carpenter and I just love the craftsmanship and the ability that you have when you're doing something with wood. It's so beautiful. I'm trying to slowly get into woodworking. So in the future, I'm probably building a credenza. So stay tuned, make sure you are subscribed because you don't want to miss that. And head on over to my Instagram, follow me over there as well. And let me know in the comments if you have any DIY ideas that you would like me to do, that you want me, maybe you have some sort of something that you're trying to come up with, but you don't know how, like a, a dilemma or something. So let me know in those comments because I would love to brainstorm ideas and share them with you all. And again, love you. Thank you for your support. Head on over to my Instagram and follow me over there as well. Take care of yourself. Take care of those around you. Don't let anything stop you from chasing your dreams. And don't forget, the journey is what brings us happiness, not the destination. I love you. See you all on the next one. Bye. Mwah.